just a small tangent, but you mentioned uh, having a conversation with Warren Buffett. You spoke really highly of him uh, as an investor, as a human being. What about him do you admire? What, uh, what, what, what from him, what insights have you drawn from him as, an, as a great investor yourself? Well, the afternoon that I got to spend with him, which you know, is something I'll treasure forever. Look, sometimes when you meet people, even that are immensely successful, you, you may decide that after 20 minutes or a half hour, oh, you were in the right place at the right time, and you know that's, that's fine. Mm -hmm. Uh, there are other people that are clearly different, special, and I don't care if you made them start from zero, you know, would would end up in a in a good place. And so it was it was an absolute privilege to spend the time with him. Um, you know, and a, a couple of things that stood out in the conversation. Um, he is incredibly intellectually curious and well read. And I like how simplistic he likes to keep his thought matrix. Mm -hmm. And then also, instead of trying to outsmart the market, it seems like a simple axiom, but just look, good companies that are led by talented managers that are good businesses over time are going to get there. So I'm not going to day trade. I'm not, I'm just going to, I'm looking for, uh, for value. And then just on, life stuff, he just, you know, and, and also his ability to take in and then use <laughs> information uh, it was incredibly impressive. So uh, I only spent the, you know, I'd met him before, but I only spent one afternoon with him, but it's, you know, pretty incredible. And one of the things that stuck out to me is we were in the middle of talking about Tulco or investing or how we thought about it. And I said, uh, you know, I'm trying to be smart about, and he stopped me and he said, Char Charlie Munger, his partner of many years, Charlie and I don't try to think of the smart thing to do. We try to think what's the dumb thing we could do here. And I kind of laughed and he said, no, I'm, I'm, I'm dead serious. We think about it from the standpoint of what could we do in this situation that later we'd be like, that was a really dumb thing to do. And I actually thought that was it, made, it it got in my head, and I I still think a lot about that as I'm as I'm dissecting problems. So there is uh like it that's a kind of long term thinking if you just avoid the dumb things, or if you uh, if you simplify every j j just focus on those simple steps. All it takes is just do that for a long period of time, and you'll be successful. Well, it certainly worked for him. <laughs> that's all I can say. What what about what about you? Uh, you've been uh, a great investor yourself. How do you know when you, when you judge people? So I, whenever I go to San Francisco, I was thinking of moving to San Francisco. That's why I, that's why I decided to, after really giving it some thought, and talking to people, decided to move to Austin. You know, um, everybody's dreaming big and they have big plans, and it's actually I don't envy the job of an investor. Uh, at, of any kind, because everybody has big dreams and it's, it's hard to know who exactly, uh, what idea is going to materialize, what, uh, what team is going to materialize into something great. How, how do you make those decisions about people, about ideas? Well, it, it, if I had any kind of a lattice work on this, it, it, it start, absolutely starts with the people. And I think the reason for that is your business plan is going to change, right? There's very few businesses I know of that say, we're gonna make a widget in this location and 30 years later, we're successful and we just make a widget and that's what it is. Things happen, right? And today they happen with such velocity that you have to be able to make hard decisions based on imperfect information. And are you, how are you going to calculate those answers? How self-interested are you going to be? What kind of ethics will you apply? What's your short-term versus long-term thinking? Are you able to give an honest assessment of a situation? Um, because the thing that you can count on is problems are gonna happen, things you didn't anticipate are gonna happen. How pliable are you, 
right? How, how much elasticity is there in, in your ability uh, to, to be successful? And I think it's important when you invest in something that you both see, you, you, you understand the roadmap ahead and agree to it, right? Doesn't mean there won't be twists and turns, but you're not like, well, wait a minute, what did we do here? I, this isn't what was in the, the thing I signed up for. Um, and then I, I think honesty and communication is a huge thing to me with, you know, I always tell people if bi-directionally, if there's something going on, start the conversation with, you know, Lex, we have a problem. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now I, we're, I'm sitting up, you have my full attention. We're going to talk about whatever it is. Bad news should travel faster than good news. Um, and because it's going to happen being in business with someone that is going to shoot you straight and sometimes say, I don't know. Yeah. I don't know what the answer is. I got to go figure it out. That I can process a lot better than, look, I, I don't want you mad at me or disappointed or I, I can't handle not having success. So we're just going to kick the can. And I, I, I think especially in today's business environment, that's very, very dangerous so that's a bad sign not just because it's uh good to do to communicate and be honest but if if they're not willing to do that then it goes back to the intellectual honesty they're probably not also able to be brutally honest with themselves when they look in the mirror about the the direction of the company well look i i wasn't there so i don't know but i think if you unpack many situations that turned out negatively, most of the people, whether you're faking lab results, right? You have a biotech company. We have everybody staring at Theranos these days. Do I think in a lot of cases, you're either the villain, like you started out saying, I'm, I'm going to screw my shareholders over and I'm going to be a liar. That, that, that isn't my experience. Most things are little incremental moves that you say, well, we're going to get this right next week, but today we got to make the presentation. So we're going to just tweak things a little bit. That's a slippery slope, right? And so that's why I think from a standpoint of people, you want to go into the foxhole with folks that, you know, understand things are going to happen and I'm going to let you know about them and we're going to try to solve them uh, together. And, and then just in terms of the idea, it's, I always ask like, okay, if this company executed the way, that's the other thing that always cracks me up about financials. Whenever somebody pitches you, inevitably they'll say, our projections are really, really conservative. I'm, I'm still waiting for somebody to come in and say, look, my projections are wildly optimistic. We'll never hit these numbers, but anyway, <laughs> um, it's, uh, you know, if this company did what it says and executes and does it matter yeah. right does it move the needle enough and and what are the what are the things that uniquely position this company to be successful and you just have to be able to answer i think a number of those questions uh pretty crisply but at the end of the day it's still a big risk so you're just trying 100%. to minimize <laughs> to try to minimize the risk